Um, to start with then, how different is uh, life at the Ospreys after the uh, rearrangement in the coaching team in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, obviously there's there's a there's there's been change um, after um, from myself working with Steve for the last year and a half, but for people beyond that, um, you get used to, to to doing things in a certain way. But um, you know, in rugby in rugby circles, things move on pretty quickly. Um, as a coaching group, we know we've got to move on quite quickly and uh, prepare as best we can for the for the upcoming. Uh, fixture against Connacht and also over the next four week block which we have to we have to really focus on but yeah you know for someone who's been in so in integral part of uh, the Ospreys as a player and as a coach um, massively respected uh, from from all the staff and also the players uh, you know there, there has been a, an element of change but you know you, you, you can't look look backwards in this game you always got to look forward and, and our focus is, 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 is purely on the next uh, four weeks. Did you have any inkling that that change was uh, coming because of going out of Europe? No, not not, not for me personally. Uh, you know, I think uh, uh, over the last seven or eight weeks, our, our performances have, have 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 been improving all the time, and we're we've, we've been competitive. Um, you know, the the decisions get made are, are, are made for for reasons that uh, you know at, at board level, and they make the decision. And for us as coaches, it's about preparing the team and coaching the team as best as possible and us to be the best coaches possible. So, um, you know, I, I really focus on the on the week to week really as an assistant coach and, and my job right now is to focus on the uh, the Connell game. What's left for Osprey's supporters to uh, look forward to this season? You're unlikely to uh, win the Pro 14 and unless yep. a few miracles happen out of Europe, changes in the coaching team. Um, What's the positives for Ospreys fans? Uh, the positives, I suppose, is, is to look at the uh, the last eight weeks, nine weeks, uh, to hopefully uh, you know keep us competitive, keep improving as as much as we have done over the last two month period from from the start of December. Um, you know, we we've got some pretty clear uh, objectives that we want to achieve, and you know, the first of that is to try and win every match. You're not always entitled to do that, but. You want to you want to be as competitive as, as you possibly can. Uh, we want to uh, we want to achieve qualification for the champions champions cup. So uh, with the table it is from fourth place to to us, you know it, it's pretty tight and and that's well within our grasp. Um, you know above that it's highly unlikely we're gonna we're gonna push for the for the knockout stages of this competition. But for us now it's just building on our last seven eight games um, in terms of the competitiveness we've shown. Uh, and, and to try to get some more wins on the board and, and try to squeeze ourselves up the table. Is it difficult for you as coaches to concentrate on your jobs given the change, given that uh, you don't know how long Alan's going to be in charge for necessarily? No, not at all. Uh, you know, our job has remained the same. It's to try to prepare the team as best as possible to, to get the best results. So, uh, you know, in rugby, you don't have too much time apart from the pre-season to or the off-season to reflect on a, a lot of things. So, for us, it's getting back to work, getting back out in the training field, getting this group of players back together, uh, because obviously we've just come out of the Anglo Welsh tournament. Um, so, and preparing a preparing a side to go out to Galway, which is going to be a really tough uh, a tough challenge in itself. Um, you know, Alan's Alan's tweaking a few things uh, in terms of our our training prep. It's for us to, as coaches to try to assist him as, as much as possible, which we are doing, and for, for preparing the team, like I said, to get the result. What's being tweaked in terms of what people will see on the field? Oh, you'll have to wait and see for that. <laughs> and uh, in terms of um, Connacht as opponents, uh, what are you expecting them to throw at you as, apart from the wind machine? Yeah, the wind machine. I've checked the weather forecast as yet, but um, it's, I think there's a high 80% probability it's going to rain or be windy. So, um, do you know, I, I think they've turned. I think themselves have, have improved under a new coach this season. Um, I think it's taken a little bit of time for them to to really gel, but I think they've had a had a big upturn in their performances over the last four to six weeks as well. So, what do you expect from Connacht? Is is I think they've, they're very comfortable with the ball in hand. Uh, they're very comfortable. Um, in terms of from 1 to 15, being able to, to keep possession for long periods of play. So for us in particular, when we're in transition and when we're in defence, we're, we're going to have to be right on our money because they've got a little bit of shape to their game who, uh, and they can ask a lot of questions. So 
uh, for us ourselves, it, it, it's been aware of that whilst respecting that we think we're going to um, pick a team and pick a 23 that can go out there and get the job done. Any indications yet whether anyone might be released by Wales back to you or not? None as, none as yet and uh, to be honest we're, we're probably not expecting, uh, especially with the, with the week that, that Wales is going to face up in, up in Twickenham, so I think they're going to be um, fully loaded. What we can do is, is the guys who have got on the ground at the moment, uh, we'll focus on in, and getting them ready. Bad news about Scott Baldwin. Yeah, gutting for Scott because uh, you know I, I think he's uh, he, he really has turned a corner. His form was 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 getting back to where we know he can he, he can be at, and uh, um, you know it's just one of those unfortunate things. You just get back to where where you'd like to be as a player, and then um, you know in pretty innocuous in a training ground incident, and then he, he's out for a long time. So, uh, but you know I'm sure he, he he's positive. You know he's got everyone supporting him, and uh, he'll come back uh, better. And what's the injury news on Jeff Haslam? Uh, do you know I haven't seen Jeff this week, so I, I don't know where Jeff is. I know he's uh, he, he had a facial injury, so uh, I think the latest on that is we're wait, awaiting whether he needs to have surgery or not. And you know, I think it's something to do with his cheekbone, so that could be four to six. Yeah, it's a shame given that he's one of the players that you'd probably look to uh, come back in and add experience at this time of year. Again. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Jeff has been uh, phenomenal for us this year. You know, every time he plays, he, he, he's, he's definitely got a lot of power. Um, you know, he's one of our, our, our big go forward players for us. And, and to lose him at this time when we, we are quite skinny on numbers in our back three, it really does stress uh the stress the squad to its limit and but we are where we are with that um, and obviously we do, we just need to make our, our best foot forward. I guess you'll have a, a couple of the Wales under 20 squad on board again this week Ruben Morgan Williams and Will Jones for example played for you last week. Yeah absolutely you know they've come into the environment they've done really well this year I think both players are growing and and and, and getting more accustomed to the the increased training workload uh, through the week and also the game intensity on a um, on a weekend, so those players are developing. It's exciting for the Ospreys that we're still able to generate that kind of young talent, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing those guys, uh, you know, uh, staking their claim. Do you think Ruben will be able to um, step up and, and contest the senior shirt next season on a sort of regular basis through the season? Do you know we, we, we've got Hal, uh, Habers, you know, who's a top top yeah. nine. We've got Allard coming, who's clearly an international player so uh, there's going to be competition for places Ruben's got guys underneath him as well who who uh, have 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 big reps on them themselves so I think the the key thing for all these young players who, who go on to represent at 18s or 20s is to understand first and foremost that there is a chain of guys underneath who are, who are bubbling away so he's got to be ready to take his chance both in training and then when he gets his opportunities and he's got to show that willingness to as any young player has to do to to, to try and grow his game improve the aspects of the game to, to get himself right in that mix. With Reece Webb, are you resigned not to seeing him again in an Australia shirt now? Uh, personally, I'm not. Uh, do you know what I mean? I don't know how, how long he's out for uh, in particular, uh, Pete. No, I've not heard. So hopefully he's, he, he can he can make it a, make some more appearances for the Ospreys. But resigned to losing him to Toulon, yeah, we are. And But he's been a, an absolute terrific servant for this club. And... Overall, obviously, the uh, the Scarlets have been uh, taking all the plaudits in recent weeks and for their uh, yep. acknowledgement and their contributions to the, the Wales side. Um, how do you react to all that, uh, given this side of the lucker, given all the uh, the traditional local rivalry that I'm sure you're uh, aware of? Yeah, I don't know if there were 15 Scarlets playing out in the field, were they? Uh, Ten and one former Scarlet. Well, so there's there's another four guys I think that we have to give credit to that fantastic performance, and I thought they were brilliant. Um, I think that what they what the what the Scarlets have shown, and and also the guys that were in the jersey from from our region as well, is that you know they've had a pretty handy European competition themselves, and I think when you put good combinations together, and and good players together, I think they they played a fantastic game of rugby. Brian, who's impressed you from your angle work group? Or will there have any chance to this weekend? Yeah, I think all those guys. I think, uh, do you know, uh, just off the top of my head, I, you know, young Will again put his hand up, showing what a, what a quality he's player he's he's potentially can be. Um, you know, I, I was quietly surprised. Like I thought, not quietly, pleasantly surprised that, about how Morgan Morris stepped up. I thought he was outstanding. Um, I think all those young guys, you know, to get to get the opportunity to taste a bit of rugby 
going to places like Gloucester and also playing in front of the Liberty Stadium is just so valuable in terms of their development of that, that sort of big match, big stadium sort of atmosphere. Um, I hope those guys grab it and, and, and keep trying to push on. And, uh, you know, they've, they've got to make things happen themselves. So, like I, I keep alluding to, you know, it, it, it's not about just getting, uh, getting that selection that first and second time. It's about the work they've got to then put into their game out on the training field to hopefully give them more opportunities in the future. But, um, you know, I thought it was a really, uh, although we, we, we didn't get the wins that we would have, we would have loved for those, for the, those young Ospreys uh, getting their starts and uh, showing what they can do, I think is, is really positive for this region. You said some sort of uh, great Jordan sakes on the years. Yeah. How does Will Jordan sort of compare with them? I know he's a young man. Yeah, I, do you know, I really like Will as a player. I think, uh, I think he punches well above his weight. I think he's got some attributes uh, from from his previous sport that really assist him in that in that seven uh, that seven jersey. Listen, he's he's gonna he's gonna make errors out on the rugby field, some some experience errors that you can only you can only ever sort of you can only experience those those moments unless you're out on the field, you know, against top end opposition. So there are going to be some mistakes in him, but it, it's about us as coaching really being positive about what the guy can do. And then just improve those little areas that, you know, that can make him the complete player. But um, I think he's he's got definitely more growth in him. Um, but I I like the way he plays the game. I think he, he hits well above his weight, and uh, he's an exciting prospect for me. And this block of games, four matches, how important are they to your European ambitions? Well, if we win four, we're right in the mix, and if we lose four, we're out of it. So it's it's huge for us. It really is huge for us, and. Uh, you know, it, it, not too many sides actually go to Galway who, who, who are banging form when they're playing at home and get the results. So we know that's going to be a huge, huge challenge. Um, like I said earlier, I think the, the 23 that we're going to select for the team for, the, for that game, it, we think, they, you know, we believe they can go out there and do that job. Um, but then after, the, we have the two South African teams as well coming to our place. So there's a real good, op- I think there's a, it's a massive four week block for us, but there's an opportunity within that four week block for us to really put ourselves into the mix of, of that Champions Cup slot. Um, and then like you said, stranger things that happen, you don't know what's gonna happen above you in the table with the, the third place team, you know. Have you got any sign of injured players in the Um off the top of my head like yep. and John, Sam Parry. Probably the majority of the season. Any of those kind of Sam Sam is definitely uh, back in the mix for for this Friday night, but unfortunately for us as a coaching group, uh, the guys that you mentioned in terms of Ben, they're they're more longer term injured than than short term. So, you know, there's no there's no cavalry coming across the hill to save us. So we we we've got what we got, but what we are going to do is represent the club, represent the region, fight for every point, and uh, and see if we can get up that ladder. And Scott Hopkin was very very good. In your first Anglo Welsh game in Gloucester. Yep. So you know you you've got a little bit of depth of okay with Sam coming back. Yeah, Sam Parry coming back into the mix is going to put some some pressure on Scotty, who who's probably just uh, he's got the nod because he's been playing rugby at the moment. So having those two guys available, also with Ivan, who can, you know, he's a really good young prospect as well. In the background, we're pretty much covered there. Um, back three, we're a bit skinny, as as well documented. To, so. Uh, you know, we we don't want to pick up any more uh, injuries if we can afford to. Which back three players have you got available this week? Uh, the back three we we have Dav available, uh, Dan, um, Hanno. That's about it. There's your back three. Yeah. <laughs>